Hey. Shut up. I'm not talking. My niece is over. <laughs> so I got, I got a new tuner from a 14 Heritage, and we're going to talk about tuning and, and shit like that. A moment of quiet. So since the uh, Christmas holidays, my nieces come over to spend some time with my daughter, and that they're just noisy shits. <laughs> so anyway, um, what I did is I bought a new tuner for the 14 Heritage, and I figured we might start over with like the tuning thing because I get that question a lot, which is scary because know enough to be dangerous, but not an expert. But you can listen to me if you want to. <laughs> so. Your motorcycle has air in, gas is out, much like most of us. Anyway, so your intake is the amount of air that goes into the motor. It's mixed with some chemistry, some magic, some wizardry, bang, bang, pistons go up and down, exhaust comes out the rear. If you didn't know that, there's other channels, probably should watch. But uh, your intake is either stock, which is low flow. All of this has to do with making a bike EPA compliant when they manufacture the bike so that it's good for the government. Um, so your intake is the amount of air in, and then your exhaust, if it's factory, is highly restrictive. So again, what they're doing is taking a big motor like a 114 or 117, if you have a CVO or whatever, and they're trying to make the exhaust that comes out the back EPA compliant, which means you're choking the ever-living hell out of the motor, the amount of the air in. Uh, you're also trying to keep the sound down, because that's another form of, of, of I almost said penetration. It's <laughs> a different video. Pollution is you know the amount of noise that comes out so the first thing you do most people when they buy a bike whether this is a harley or a honda or a whatever it doesn't matter ducati for one of them rich folks um is they make it noisier when you make it noisier and you want to get some sound out of it whether you do slip-ons or a full exhaust or whatever you are lessening the back pressure so a loud muffler is less restrictive not just on sound but on exhaust gases so there's more air coming out more gases getting out of the motor easily. So what that means is there's a little bit of imbalance, okay? So your motor can adjust on its own around 10%-ish, depending on the bike you have, Harley's around 10%. That 10% is built in there in case you go for a ride up to, you live in Miami like I do, where you're at sea level, like the ocean's up there, you know? Um, and, or if you ride up to Cal, uh, Colorado and you're 6,000 elevation, 6,000 foot elevation, the bike can adjust and it'll be okay. Um, so that's what the 10% is for. If you throw a high flow intake on your motorcycle, more air in, which is a, which is a Screaming Eagle intake, an s, &S intake, uh, a Vance and Hines intake, a Cobra wakes one, uh, Arlen Ness, you do one of those high flow cool looking intakes, you're now putting more air in and the motor can only accommodate for 10%. So that's where your bike ends up running lean. Um, so real quick, lean is more air than fuel. Rich is more fuel than air. So to richen up a motorcycle is to increase, increase the amount of fuel in the mixture. Um, I feel like I'm just going to talk for four and a half hours here, <laughs> but stick with me. So what you're doing is helping the motorcycle adjust its ignition timing, the air fuel mixture, all that stuff. That's what tuning is, is making sure the bike has the right amount of fuel at the right RPM under the right amount of load of the throttle and all that stuff. That's what tuning is. Now, historically, this was called jetting. Tuning was rejetting your carburetor. So inside a carburetor, there's two jets. I'm generalizing here, but you have an idle jet and a throttle jet, and you could change the size of the diameter inside the hole making more fuel and that's how you did it. You changed your jets to base, base on, on the, the amount of airflow you've got in and the exhaust you got on. So you rejetted your carb to make the bike run right with that stuff. Today, since, hell, how long? My first fuel injected Harley was an 04, I guess. But I've had them since then that had older fuel injection. So all the way back to around 2000, you had fuel injected Harleys and therefore you couldn't jet it. There's no carburetor. You have to adjust the ECM and tell it what to do with the fuel injection. If you're really a, like, you wanna go down the geek road of carburetors versus fuel injection versus all that stuff, I'll put a link down below. One of my favorite bike channels uh, is Fortnite. Some of you are dying right now because he's a kid out of Canada, I know, but the guy's freaking brilliant. 
gotta be an engineer or something. There's no way that guy doesn't use his noggin for his living. But uh, actually, I think he just says Fortnite now. But anyway, you'll see what I mean. I'll put a link down below. He goes through carburetor and fuel injection. And I learned more in eight minutes from that kid than I think I have anyone on this planet. So I'll put that link down below. But why are we talking about this today? I've owned, I don't even know how many freaking Harleys over the years because uh, I have an addiction to them and I buy and sell them at a massive loss. It's a terrible business plan. Don't follow me. Don't do what I do. Do as I say. But uh, this 2014 Heritage that you've seen in earlier videos, uh, or maybe you haven't, maybe you're new to the channel. If so, welcome. Hit subscribe. Um, bought new in 2014, or rather my dad did. And I have since inherited it from him, even though he is alive. <laughs> Bought him out of it a while back. Um, when we bought it brand new 2014 for him, uh, it was tuned by the dealer. It has Vance and Heinz long shots, and it had, at the time, a Harley Screaming Eagle intake, which, back up there, your intake either is high flow or isn't. There's not a lot of variance. I know someone out there is going, but what about the burp and burp and burp that my brother-in-law's cousin's former roommate bought? It either is high flow or it isn't. There's not a lot of variation there. I run SNS intakes on most of my bikes. As a matter of fact, all of them. <laughs> all three that run, anyway. That chopper can go screw itself. But anyway, um, the uh, uh, the other three Harleys I have, my 21 Ultra, the wife CVO, and my Heritage are all running SNS intakes. Uh, I think they're fantastic, they're good quality, and they're and they, they are high flow intakes. Whether you have high flow or you don't, there's not a lot of variance in there. You're either stock or you're not. That makes sense. Comment down below. I answer questions. Um, anyway, this bike we bought it brand new in 2014. I can't remember if we installed the intake in the pipes or they did. I don't. It wouldn't be like us to pay a dealer to do it. So I think we did it. Uh, yeah, pretty sure because I've never paid a dealer to do it. Exhaust. Uh, so it's got Vance and Heinz long shots on it, and it has now an SNS high flow intake. But again, before it had Scream Eagle, doesn't matter high flow or not. And it was tuned with Harley's tuner. Now. We should probably take a break and go back into Harley's tuning debacle BS. So let's take an intermission. Needed a beer for this. If you don't know from earlier videos, this is what I call bulk beer. There's good beer and bulk beer. This is your garage work on your bike beer. Middle light, Coors, Bush light, whatever, you know. Anyway, so to get into this Harley tuning warranty pile of shit. Um, Someone comment what year, maybe I'll put it on my screen. Several years ago, not like 20, like in the mid-teens, I think, so I'm pretty sure post-2014, uh, Harley-Davidson got in a little trouble with the EPA, essentially for selling motorcycles that were EPA compliant, which you have to, to legally, you know, da, 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 selling motorcycles that were legally, you know, EPA compliant, and then immediately selling you what you needed to make it not from the factory with Harley Davidson's, Harley Davidson's name on it. That's like my 2019 diesel Ford pickup truck when I bought it at the dealer, walking in, buying the truck, and then immediately off the shelf buying a tuner that was going to make delete the, the DES system. And, you know, like, same kind of thing. And Harley got dinged for it. I'm not going into a political thing. It, you have your own shit. I, I, I kind of get where the lawsuit came from. You're buying something that's legal, and then I'm also going to sell you what you need to make it illegal. It's like, I'm not going to go down the air. I was going to say buy a rifle, then make it auto. I mean, you know, I'm, anyway, yeah, whatever. Um, so they got in trouble for that. So they were sued. They lost, and they could no longer sell the Screaming Eagle tuner that they used to make. That Screaming Eagle tuner, uh, I think it was called the Street Race, whatever, job or Niner Action. Woo, bang, bang. Um, Twas orange. I can tell you that. The tuner was orange, and you hooked that to your your bike, and then you hooked into a laptop, and then the tuner, we could use a dyno to tune it and do whatever you wanted with it. Sky's the limit. You could make it as non-EPA compliant, you know, track only, blah, 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 blah. Yummy. Um, so when they sued, they got sued, they lost, and they had to stop selling the orange race tuner. Um, so they came out with the new street tuner, which looks the same, but it's black. The tuner itself is black plastic, and that is locked down tighter than a drum to make the bike stay EPA. So a tuner can tune the bike, but only within constraints that keep the motorcycle street legal for EPA requirements. Uh, side note, the dude that designed the orange race tuner that made a non-EPA, uh, I don't know what the conditions of that was. He left Harley, 
at that point and started his own company called TTS. And TTS race tuners are, in some ways, the old orange Harley race tuner that is race applications only, meaning it cannot be used on the streets, even though that bike right there is tuned with one. So a TTS is a fantastic tuner if you're going high end, you're going, you know, you're going cams, you're going some big old jugs because big jugs are awesome. Anyway, uh, you're going all in on your motor and you want it to be tuned, you know, maximum horsepower, et cetera, et cetera. TTS is a great option. Um, so that's what happened there. And then what Harley did to their warranty was the new black tuner, the new street race or street tuner, street blah, 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 tuner, the dealer can sell you. The only tuner that dealer can sell you that says Harley on it, they cannot sell you the orange one anymore. Uh, that's the only one you can use that preserves the factory warranty on your motorcycle. It's a bit bullshit. It is because tuning a bike with a race tuner is not going to cause catastrophic engine failure. It's just not. It's just that Harley, um, essentially doesn't trust aftermarket tuners and they want to preserve the market. And so they say, if you're going to buy a brand new Harley Davidson with the two year unlimited mileage warranty that comes on new Harleys, if you're going to preserve that powertrain warranty, you can only buy the Harley tuner that's black that the dealers use to tune that keep the bike EPA compliant. That's the terms of the lawsuit, I think too. So there's a bunch of shit going on there. Now, using a different tuner within the factory warranty technically does void your powertrain warranty and there's nothing you can do about it. If the bike gets plugged into digital tech, which is Harley's software they use the dealers, if the bike gets plugged into digital tech, digital tech sends a file to Harley corporate with, with or without a clickety-doo of the, the dealer and says, this bike's been tuned after market, warranty void. Flags the flags the VIN number and your motorcycle at every single Harley Davidson dealership in the country has been flagged, has been tuned with an aftermarket tuner, therefore powertrain warranty void. There is a way back from that a little bit. Um, there's a million different you know, creative ways. Read the comments, because dudes are gonna jump in with how they got around it. Uh, a, your dealer can never plug your bike into digital tech. That's becoming increasingly difficult because Harley is demanding almost all warranty claims to have had a digital tech plugin. By the way, no, I don't work for Harley. I just, I know my service advisors really well. And it was just really important. And so they will tell you all the dirty secrets. Uh, so anymore, if there's a warranty claim in the bike, regardless of what it's for, they're starting to demand a digital tech upload. Just reality. Um, and, and that flags the VIN everywhere, like I said, and you can't just go down the street. There are, there are dudes I know that, you know, that, that they just try and get around the dealer plugging it in. That worked for me for years. I don't know if it will anymore. The dealer just knew to never plug my bike in, no matter what they were doing. It's not working so well anymore. Uh, Harley's still chasing that one for a download. <laughs> um, and, uh, but then after two years, you can kind of do whatever you want. If you bought an extended warranty, check with the details and terms of your extended warranty. I'm not giving you advice here. I'm just saying, as I understand, a whole lot of extended warranties, even Harley's doesn't care so much about the tuner once it's the extended warranty, not the factory two year. So if your bike's two years old, who gives a shit? There you want. That's why I look at it. Uh, and that one is just now two years old, so I don't care anymore. The Anyway, back to the heritage. The reason why I'm retuning it is that orange race tuner has an Achilles heel, and that is the dude that did the tuning. In 2014, when I bought that bike, uh, I won't say where from, but I bought it from the dealer that I buy all my bikes from. The tuner that was there uh, was not the tuner that is there now. The guy himself is, is changed. The guy that's there now, his name's Billy, tuned that guy. He's a freaking artist and he is phenomenal. So if you do big motors and big builds, Billy can get max power and make them livable. You know, like he, that bike's very rideable, even though it's got a big ass cam in it and whatnot. Um, Billy wasn't there at the time. Some other guy was, twas a schmuck and the bike has never run right. It has had decel popping like crazy. It's had some, some hard decel pop. We're talking full on detonations sometimes. Uh, and it's just the throttle's not real responsive. It's just not tuned right. And so I ordered a tuner that I've used a billion freaking times on the bikes that I've owned over the years. And that is the Vance and Heinz FP3. I like the FP3. Hang on, right now, there's a dude screaming at his at his TV or computer going, if you don't have a Dynajet purple power manufacturer flipping to doodah, you're just an idiot. This guy's screaming right now. It just, and it's because, whatever. If your bike is stock, bullshit. 
You can take a, a, a Dynajet Power Commander, Power Vision, Niner Action, 34-495, and take it to the most brilliant tuner on earth. And if your motor is stock, enjoy your extra half horsepower. Because you're going to buy the tuner for 400 and something dollars. That's about the range, four to 500 bucks for a tuner these days. Then you got to pay the tuner his labor, which down here is about another $400. Now you got $850 invested in having a bike tuned. If the motor is stock, that is a waste. And now you're locked into the map that that tuner has uploaded into your Dino Superboy, whatever the hell you've got, which is a fine product. You know what I'm talking about? The Dino Jet's a fine product. I'm saying it's dependent upon a highly knowledgeable tuner to make it just right. And any changes you make to the motorcycle, including some dudes even say, even though, you know, I just said high flow or not, even if you just change the intake to a different intake, technically it really should go back on the dyno and have someone make it just right for that bike. Um, I don't like that. I don't like that I'm dependent on a $400 ticket every time I want to change anything in my bike because I change stuff a lot. It's, it's a problem. Anywho, finally, Seven years after I bought that bike, uh, I bought an FP3 for it, and we're going to retune it. The bought it from Dennis Kirk, got a hell of a good deal on it. They're like 450 retail, and I think I paid 390 and change for it, uh, which I thought was a great deal. That may have been a Christmas thing, I don't know, but it was it was a good deal. So it came during the holidays, and we're going to go ahead and hook it up now. Uh, also, cool enough, Den Dennis Kirk reached out to Vincent Hines to verify that the map that's in there right now that used the orange, you know, race tuner, it will preserve that map in a memory slot. So if I do want to go back to that, I can. Um, but what this FP3 is going to do is a little box that I'll show you in a minute, plugs into the data port of the bike. You can do this at home. If your bike is not under warranty anymore, I, go for it. If your bike is fuel injected, 2000, you know, three or newer, go to their website, check the part number first, go to Dennis Kirk, but blah, 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 blah. It'll, it'll show you what model you need, which one. I think there's only two or three of them because it's just a different plug. Put in the year, make, model of your bike, and it'll show you which one you want. And it should be anywhere from four to $500. You can plug this into the port, run the little app on your phone, and, and install a base map, which is what this is gonna say is 2014 Heritage Softail, with a high flow intake, because again, it either is high flow or is, or is not. And it's gonna say Vance and Hines, I think these are called Big, Big Shots Long in 2014. And it'll do that, and it's gonna upload a base map to that bike, which is a dyno map that that Vance and Heinz created. The thing I like about the FP3 is that's probably gonna be fine, or if I want to, I can get out on the highway and I can run a fine tune using your phone. Uh, you put it into tuning mode, go down the road, and you're and you're just going through your gears slowly, watching this little map, waiting for the little squares to go from red to yellow to green. Once they're green, it has picked exactly the right mixture and you can save all that stuff and upload it and get your bike just right. So. Uh, I'm excited because this thing has always irritated me with the D-cell pop. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's never been tuned right, and we're going to do it right today. So there's an hour of your life you'll never get back. <laughs> Let's get at it. Damn. Just not a regular looking guy. Hmm. Anyway, beard's coming back. That helps. Anywho, uh, fuel pack. It's not a lot of uh, packaging and hoo-ha here. Oh, shiza. Um fine this is all fine so in the box you've got the fuel pack and an installation guide i'm telling you you don't really need one and i'm looking at the plug 99.9 .9 percent sure percent sure percent sure that that was the right plug so i'm just going to plug this guy in we'll start the app i gotta figure out how the hell to record that because this is an amateur dumbass channel i don't know what i'm doing um yeah so in short what you're doing is taking your seat off your bike i mean no shit <laughs> And you're going to plug the FP3 into, I'm almost positive it's this guy here. Uh, I'll verify, obviously, and show you, but I'm pretty sure that's the data port. Uh, and you're going to plug the FP3 in, and then it's going to do its mojo, voodoo, whatnot, and upload a new map. Now, you can then, if you want, after you put that base map in, you can just go, that's fine, that's all I want to do, and just ride her. And she's going to be fine, I'd almost guarantee it. If you want to fine-tune it, then you need, you leave it plugged in. Uh, and then you do all this other stuff that I'll do later because I am going to fine tune this bike just because I don't know. I'm anal retentive. Um, but anyway, the, the, the other reason why you want me to leave it, might want to leave it plugged in is the FP3 on your phone via the app, they'll, they'll communicate via wizardry, 
and you can see a whole lot of data readouts on your bike that you can't see otherwise. So, you know, exact throttle position, uh, I think engine temperature, all kinds of stuff. I'll show that in a bit, but uh, let me go ahead and unwrap this sucker. You know what else I just realized? I got new, if you're a huge fan of Ice Grip Garage, you know what I'm saying when I say it's got new uh, sparkulators and uh, lightning, lightning hoses that I got to put on this because don't have to, but again, she's seven years old and running the original plugs and plug wire, so why not? This is not expensive stuff, so I'm going to do that too. Um, yeah, so plug her in. Let's do it. All right. So I am like 99.999% sure this is the plug. And tis. So what I'm doing is just literally plugging her in. So now the fuel pack is plugged into the port. Main switch on. Kill switch on. She's juiced up and flashing, which is my favorite thing to say about the girls at parties. Anyway, um, now I got to switch the camera doodad to get things working the right way. Hang on. This is what I have to work with. So what we're going to do is I can't do screen capture. All right. So I already had the fuel pack software because I have 75 of these things <laughs> just about. And there's glare and it's awful and trying to make this better and it sucks and the, and the phone now went to no this son of a there we go uh blue there we go select an accessory that's got to be it so it came up it's all empowered on so gots to be the one i don't know what the vent of my bike is off the top of my head so what it's now going to do is pair the FP3 with this motorcycle, and no, it can never be used on another bike ever again. You buy one, and you're done. Okay, so now it is now, oh, it's got to do an update, of course. What am I thinking? So, typically when you do these, you know, in the box, it did not have the latest software, so it's going to have to update. So I'm not going to make you watch all this, but I'm going to hit install now because you should always be running the latest firmware and stuff on your stuff. So I'll be back when this is done. I have a Porsche. Mm -hmm. How much can it tow, you friggin' prick? Anyway, uh, one thing I want to talk about while this is doing the firmware update. Um, I had to verify something on my 2014 that may not be the case for yours. Just be aware. So, because mine had been tuned with the old Screaming Eagle tuner, there was concern that I shared as to what, how this would go because there was already an aftermarket map in the bike. And I touched on this, but I verified, Dennis Kirk actually reached out to Vance and Heinz for me and found out, uh, awesome of them to do that, that on these later model bikes, again, this is a 14, so verify this for yourself for your year. What it's going to do is take that map that's in there from the Screaming Eagle tuner and save that in a slot, as it calls it. And then um, it's going to upload the new Vance and Heinz map to a different slot. So it'll still be there and backed up. If your bike is older, and I'm thinking, you know, early fuel injection, early ECMs, pre-CAN bus type stuff, uh, you may have to take the tuner that you used before if your bike's already been tuned with something else, and unfortunately take it to a dealer and have it put back to the stock map. That's only if the bike is older, though. If it's a, you know, again, this is a 14, it's already seven years old, but if there's, if there's, you know, a couple years before that, you're fine. But if you get into the early 2000s, you might have to put the bike back to stock before you can use an FP3. Just be aware of that. Not probably going to be a problem. Most of you just wanted to put that little asterisk in there. All right. So the, the firm, firmware, firm softness is up to date and whatnot. So uh, we're going to do search for a map. Exhaust manufacturer is Vance and Heinz right now. It's about to change, but nonetheless. And you've got Big Shots Long. What's on there? It has a standard baffle. See, all this stuff matters when you come talk about back pressure. It is unfortunately a stock 103, and there you go. So, a Vance and Heinz Big Shots Long standard baffle, stock 103 cubic inch with a high flow air filter. Again, for the most part, yeah, there is or is not high flow. There's not a lot of variation. It doesn't matter which one you got. I don't have to find S and S, you know, for my intake. I just know it's got a high flow intake. So we're going to click that. There we go. So I don't know how well you can see this picture. Exhaust manufacturer, Vance and Hines. Exhaust number 17823. That's the model number of the pipes. I'm pretty sure that's it. <laughs> I put these on seven years ago. I don't know the model number. Uh, standard baffle. It's true. I did not remove the baffles on this guy. A uh, little bit of back pressure is good. So they're still in there. 
uh, Softail 103, cam is stock, engine mod stock. You can do more if you do cams. I don't recommend it. I do think that, and we're going to do this at the end of the video. If you're going big jugs, if you're going cams, etc., you probably need to do more. I mean, you can do it here, but it's just not perfect. If you're doing just exhaust and basic stuff and you like to tweak things on a regular basis, i.e. change the pipe, change the intake, etc., this is just good because you don't have to pay someone 400 bucks every time for minor mods. So there you go. I'm sorry, here at the bottom. Program bike with this map. General warning. Yeah, that may affect engine performance. Yeah, we got that. <laughs> no reading all that. So you see it's doing its voodoo. And you're going to hear the bike click where the ECM shuts off and back on, reboots the bike a few times, that kind of stuff. Loading fuel pack to your bike. I don't know if you can read that or not. That's why I'm reading it out loud. Sorry, I don't have a better solution, but tis what it is. Linking fuel pack to your bike. So now is where it's saying this fuel pack is forever bonded to this bike. It cannot be used with any other motorcycle ever again after this date. It is now permanently bonded to this bike. I've got, uh, hell, I think I still have a fuel pack in my drawer from a bike I don't own anymore. Ha <laughs> ha. Can't use it though because it's, again, stuck on that bike. Now I feel guilty. <laughs> we'll be back in a minute when this is all done. I'm not going to sit here and make you watch this. All right. It said that it was done doing that. Now it's asking me to just shut the bike off for 30 seconds. As soon as the phone loses Bluetooth connection with the fuel pack, it'll start counting for itself for 30 seconds. So waiting for 30 seconds, it says, keep, please keep bike off. And then when it's, It'll, when it's done counting, it'll tell me to turn it back on so it'll relink with the fuel pack and all that happy stuff. So, I only did this video because I'm a huge fan of these. I have no, no, there's no deal with Vance and Hines. They don't know who the hell I am or give a shit if I live or die. But, uh, that was harsh. I don't mean it like that. <laughs> but, um, I have bought probably a half dozen to a dozen of these over the years. Uh, I've run them on a couple fat boys I've had. I've run them on now this bike. I ran it on my old uh, Milwaukee 8 107. So on a Milwaukee 8 motor, not just twin cams. Uh, and I really like them. I think that it's, uh, it's, a, it's a really good uh, tuner for someone who likes to tinker at home. I, I hate the idea of having to pay someone every time I do any sort of minor change. If you're someone who likes to DIY your own cams and that kind of stuff, you can use this. You can do cams. It, it knows quite a bit. And if it doesn't have it in the database, like the cam you used, you can contact Vance and Hines and they will send you a map. I'm just saying that if you're going that far into your motor, then you probably are okay paying the 200 or 400 bucks every time you make a tweak to the bike. That's just the sand. For a normal freaking idiot like myself who likes to work in the garage, the FP3 is freaking badass. So let's check and see where we are. Probably says turn it back on, you fat schmuck. It says turn bike on, it doesn't say fat schmuck, but we'll do that anyway. So that's back on. You need to turn the main ignition and the kill switch on, by the way. Da, da, da. Waiting for Bluetooth. There we go, map transferred. I just programmed my bike with FP3. Now it's got a button to search, show it to Facebook, whatever. I'm not gonna do it. So we're gonna hit done, and there you go. Now. Let's go ahead and we'll actually look at some other stuff. So there's a million things you can do, right? So watch this. Now that I've left it plugged in, you can see engine temperature, battery voltage, speedometer, uh, throttle position sensor, 0%. You know, what is that? What is that? <laughs> and I'm going 102 miles an hour. I don't know what that is, but... Uh, there's all kinds of stuff where you can Imperial. Oh, that's the settings of that. And then we go and see we're still doing 102 miles an hour uh, I'm not sure what all these different Screens are but you can still see that there's a, there's readouts from the bike coming and if I were running Obviously it would show me the engine temperature and the voltage if it changes and where I am with the throttle and, and the speedometer I mean you've got all that stuff that's reading out real time from the bike. As a matter of fact um, Let's go ahead and start the bike and it'll show you that stuff Corner white says I'm going 102 miles an hour. Got a 
reconnect. Oh. That might be RPM, sorry. you right now um i can already hear a difference and i don't you think i'm nuts I'm being serious this bike when it was tuned before um when it was running through rich cycle used to idle a lot higher than that so that's one of the things i always thought that it, it it i always idled and this is all set by the tuner last time it always idled at you know a thousand eleven hundred rpms now i know there's a thing there your, your twin cam motors need to idle higher than like an Evo or even a Milwaukee 8 because the twin cam motors need that much, that many RPMs to keep motor uh, oil going to the top of the motor. So a twin cam can't idle at 800, like a, like a, a built Milwaukee 8 with a cam in it so that it slopes like that. Can't do it to a twin cam, it, it, it's not good on the motor. Um, anyway, so let's see here real quick. All right, so let's go into, if you wanted to screw with this stuff, I'm not gonna, but I'll just show you the menus. So we already did search for a map. That's how we just programmed it. But you see, you can do view, edit maps. This is the Screaming Eagle map that's in there. That's preserved, so I can put it back if I want to. But here's the one I just uploaded. And look at all the stuff you can screw with. You can screw with the air fuel ratio manually. Decel pop uh, is off right now. Hot on high, medium. I'm going to set it to medium, right? I'm making that change right now because decel pop was an issue on this bike. Uh, you can screw with a million other things I am not going to do, but I did want to turn on diesel pops. There you go. Camshafts. You can edit it to add, change your cams now, all that sort of stuff. This button right here means do my bidding and add that. So now it is going to change the map to have medium diesel pop turned on in, in the, you know, it's the, it's the air fuel mixture as you're decelerating. It's going to tweak that a bit. Because this bike had a significant amount of diesel pop, always did. I mean, I pop, 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 and then every once in a while, pow, the 12 gauge just went off, you know? Uh, waiting for the bike to be turned off. You see a pattern here? Wait 30 seconds, turn it back on, and then it'll say that that's done. So, um, I don't think if I want to do the fine tune today, or we may do a separate video on that. Give me a moment. I'm not sure that I'm going to do the auto tune today um, because it's a whole other process. That's probably a video of its own, but I'll probably, I'll do that this week. I'm sure because I need to go out to essentially let me back up here. Let me show you what this is. So I've got my map up here and you hit auto tune. So it's got the base map already loaded and I added B cell pop and then, you know, it's, it's pretty well read good to go, but because I'm anal retentive, I'm going to run auto tune to fine tweak that. Now I am not going to be doing this much smarter software is going to actually do it. But what you do is you hit auto tune, continue. And then what's going to happen is quick setup because again, I'm an idiot. You're going to tell the bike, yes, you have a base map, but I want to find auto tune it. I want basically artificial intelligence and wizardry and whatever to, uh, that's the map, uh, sort of check this for me. So what you're looking at here, is the base table of the RPMs going down here. Oh, oh damn it, I actually put it in auto-tune. <laughs> I didn't mean to actually put it in auto-tune. Because what you do is you put the bike in auto-tune mode and it neuters it and it doesn't run right because it's in auto-tune mode. It's reading the sensors the whole time and stuff. So, uh, son of a bitch. Anyway, I wanted to just show you. Looks like I'm auto-tuning today. Yeah, I did it. I didn't mean to put it in auto-tune. <laughs> um, anyway, so I'm still not going to do the auto-tune today because what I, what I need to do is, you, and what you need to do if you do yours, is you need to find a nice rural highway or something. And I know this time of year for a lot of you can't even do that. I'm sorry because of the cold and shit, but find a nice rural highway. There's no traffic. 
you put the, and I'll show you this, you put the FP3 in auto-tune mode, which again is going to make your bike not run right if you're on auto-tune mode. That's intentional. It basically opens, someone smarter than me comment down below, but puts the sensors in record mode, does all this stuff so that you can actually tweak things. So it takes the base map that I just uploaded, puts that in auto-tune mode, you put your phone on, uh, it, it, you know, on the bike somewhere so that you can actually see it. So I have a, a rock form case and I have a rock form mount on my bar there. And I'm going to get on Highway 80, which is pretty rural, and I'm just going to hit the road. And it all this is going to stay white, but as you ride, these are all RPM, so 750,000, 25, da da da. And this is throttle position sensor, so 25% throttle, 60%, 100%, etc. And while you ride, you're gonna see these little squares turn yellow while it's measuring, and it's gonna turn green when it's got a good solid reading. And what you're trying to do is turn as many of these squares green as possible, okay? So you're trying to get good data from your exact motorcycle on what it should be doing on air fuel mixture, et cetera. So what you're trying to do is, I mean, are you gonna fill all these green? No, man, that's not realistic. You're gonna get um, you know, how your typical riding is. So it's whatever you're typically at. If you, if everywhere you go is at 100% throttle at 6,500 RPMs, and there you go, that's what you want. Now, don't do that. But uh, this is how you're basically going to try and get some good data for your bike. And then when you're done, you're going to hit apply values, and it's going to go through that, that process like it's uploading a new map. And what it's really doing is taking the map that was in there and making it a little bit better for your exact motorcycle and uploading it. I'm not going to do that today. Um, not too much shit to do and, it's, and it takes a while I mean you need give yourself a couple hours uh, to do that now I'm going back here you don't have to the base map is probably fine I told you the bike was already idling better you know it's startup than it did when it had that goofy what the hell ever that tuner did to it years ago uh, it was already at a better one I'd be willing to bet when it's warm up it'll sound better I bet it will I bet it will not decel pop like it was I bet it's already going to run great so you're probably fine but if you're like me and you just want Perfection, like you know, the equalizer in the 80s where you did every little slider, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this helped. I think the FP3 is fantastic. Um, you can get them all over the place. I got mine at Dennis Kirk, it's where I buy everything anymore. It seems like the prices are best there, and I get stuff in like two days. So there you go. Uh, any questions down below? If you disagree and you're like, if you don't do a dino jet, you're a goddamn idiot, fine. You probably have a 4,000 cubic inch motor with extra cams, not just a big cam, like yours is running four cams somehow, but you know, that kind of thing. Then you need that. You need a TTS or you need something like that. I put a TTS in a CVO just because it's got an SNS 475 cam in it. You know, may maybe you need that for your big ass engine build. If you're a regular schmuck like myself with a stock 103, you know, bar hopper that you want to change the pipes and, and tinker with every once in a while and you want to play with the tuning a bit, FP3 all day long, because then you don't have to pay someone to do it. So, uh, if you're new to the channel, thanks a ton for sticking with me this long. I think this is the longest freaking video I've ever done. If you're not a subscriber, please hit it. Hit the bell for notifications, because that shit never works. <laughs> and I really appreciate it, and uh, we'll talk soon. Watch for lives, because after the first year, me and the miss will be right back to uh, having way too much to drink on camera, and we can all be stupid together. So, take care of each other out there. Hope you had a great Christmas, and are about to have a happy new year, and we'll talk real soon. Bye.